Hi, this is Philip Bell with Save the Nation Today. I'm the Director of External Relations here at FreedomWorks, and I am incredibly excited to have Congressman Byron Donalds, one of the leading voices in the House of Representatives, a rising star from Florida's 19th Congressional District. Congressman Donalds, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Well, we are here to talk about education reform and education freedom, and I know Florida mm -hmm. has for a long time been a hot spot for education reform. So tell us about what your take is of education freedom and really how it benefits everybody in the state. Well, I mean, look, the first principle is, is that we just wanted to make sure that every child had access to a world-class education. And so the second question became, if that's gonna be your goal, what are you gonna try to do? I mean, we started with McKay scholarships. Uh, then we started with the Florida tax credit scholarships. Uh, when Jeb Bush was governor, that's when we opened up uh, the law in Florida for charter schools to be able to come in and flourish. And it's really about just making sure that parents have options for their child. No more, no less. Um, and that's not to really try to go after any one set of education. I've never been the biggest fan of public schools. But the reality is, is that if parents take an active role in choosing the environment for their children, then typically the outcomes for the child end up being the best or the most optimal for that child as they move from uh, obviously a child to young adulthood, a young adulthood and into life. And so I think it's important that when you think about school choice, what really is the tip of the steer, spear, excuse me, is parents making an affirmative choice of where their child goes to school. And in Florida, what we did is we tried to provide enough resources and options so parents could actually make an affirmative decision for their child. Well, and that is great. And you mentioned something that's very interesting. It is teachers. Now, the teachers always said, especially when I was growing up in Florida, we want more parental involvement and engagement. But at the same time, the teachers unions tended to be some of the biggest uh, opponents of school choice. So what do you say to them? And in particular, when they target minority students and say, well, it hurts them. How do you respond to that? Well, the first thing is that the teachers union is really concerned about one primary overall goal, and that's having members in their union. Um, the teachers union, that's their goal. If charter schools were unionized, they wouldn't actually be opposed to charter schools. They would be fine with it. The issue is, is that charter schools are not unionized, that private schools are not unionized. And so the union feels that that takes away dollars from their organization to support their members, which are teachers, not children. So that's the first thing. I think overall, what I would say when they try to bring black kids up and say that, oh, if children leave, it's gonna hurt black kids. I actually disagree with that. I think that if you have a situation and we have that situation in many parts of Florida where parents can make a decision and they're not trapped in the neighborhood school, it makes the neighborhood school district actually have to step up their game and be better. Because it doesn't matter if you're a public school or if you're Amazon, Google, Facebook, it doesn't matter, Verizon or AT&T, the number one thing you want is market share. And you want to have as many customers as possible. And so for the public school system and for the teachers union, what they're interested in make, is making sure they have as many children as possible that they're educating. And so the reason why they'll, they'll say, oh, well, if we allow school choice, it's going to hurt black kids is because they feel that if people are making a decision, then money's gonna come out of that school, it's gonna follow the child. But what also does happen, it makes schools have to step up, it makes them have to do better, it makes them have to be at their best in order to maintain market share and keep children coming to their schools. Yes, and now the most important question, what can the viewers who are watching this do so that they can amplify what you're talking about and what they know as parents? I know one way is obviously to get involved in Freedom Works. But what are some other things that perhaps you're working on or directions that you can point them? Well, look, I think the first thing is that everybody's got to be involved in education. And that does, that's not just for parents. That's for anybody in our society. Our country can only flourish with the highly educated people that can then take on the next wave of leadership in our country. So this is everybody's situation, not just people who have, who have children in the schools. So I think that's number one. Everybody has to be engaged. And then number two, more importantly, I mean, in Florida, we're leading the way, but other states need to really embrace parental choice 
and different options when it comes to schooling. This is 2022. There is no reason why a child should be trapped by a zip code on where they go to school. They should be able to find an academic environment that suits their needs the best. And so when people wanna get active, obviously you can do that with FreedomWorks and I would totally support that. But at the same time, what you need to do is get involved locally, get involved with your state legislature and really be advocates for making sure that parents are standing at the front of the line when it comes to the choices that face their children. Well, Congressman Donalds, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for all you're doing on Capitol Hill. Please keep up the good work and let's keep making this country a better place. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on.